What's going on guys? My name is Peter Katani and I'm here to talk about the anniversary box. We finally got it out this week and we got a ton of cards. And I'm talking about a ton of cards. But each card is like a one-off in an old archetype. Some of you guys never even seen them. Um, these are the red packets. Do you guys know there's a Dr. Mew leader? I did. Very old. I think it's like a year at least. Um, Vados, that's a leader too guys. Surprise. Um, this is the red package. The blue package, which is super exciting. There's gods. There's a Masu and Black Goku. Even Beerus got a blue card. Very cool. Um, green, yellow, of course. Every color got something. Come to us. Um, and last, black. But black is, ooh, that's another league. League of its own. The thing is about each card, it's just one. It's one of. It can't, it's not enough cards to completely change the game. Uh, we're going to use like Paragus as an example. Oh my god, you can play old school Broly again. This card is so good. Your battle cards can't die. So like the leader with the with the ring in Paragus, your leader effect has no negative effect on you. That's crazy. You could have done the same with uh, Kefla, the two drop. Once it helps you awaken, it's 20k. Um, it was just theoretically better. But the point I'm trying to get across is that card's been out for a while and that couldn't do much. So this Paragus, I don't think it's going to save it, but hey, you know, it's great art. And if you have it full, it's even better. Um, and there's like a lot of one-ups, like this Android 13. Oh my god, this is such a cool concept. Like now you can bring out the 7 drops so much easier. Very true. It's just sad that like Super 17, the leader, uses this engine so much better than most or uh, than the other this krillin definitely pretty solid uh because the sr goku that comes out when a krillin dies was very strong but a four drop krillin was kind of like slow now with this krillin that card will definitely see play same thing with this gohan um i believe it was a seven drop that comes into play it it, it dominated that turn kind of hard because it's a seven drop it evolved for six you can never really bring it out now this is a turn four that literally draws two cards just by playing it and then it also has that additional effect this card is up there um they're trying green vegeto they can't do it zamasu black goku definitely will see plays this is a combo piece way too good for ultra instinct um but the point i'm trying to get across is every deck gets like a one of maybe a two of a cards um but it can't fully change what the the deck does except for one is the card we're going to talk about this Vados. this Vados is completely different from every other card that you saw in this little page this Vados lets you awaken on turn two when you play this card you choose one card in your hand place it in the drop area if you do for the race on your turn your leader if your leader is a red champa or red Vados, you can activate the awaken skill even at five or more life so on turn two, you can awaken pretty much like on seven life because they're going to at least for you later on their turn um, most of the time. So you'll have <laughs> um, you'll have seven life left and then you're awakened or you can defend yourself and waste cards in hand. And this is a card you have to play and pitch a card. So you like minus two out of your hand. But when you awaken those old school leaders used to draw two cards. So it completely replaces itself. But now your leader has the ability to, to swing and draw a card. And it's a 15k with that much life, which makes a difference. It's pretty solid. So um, I think this is a really big change for leaders like this. I don't think it's really good against Champa or like with Champa. Reason why is because Champa's ability on the front side is... Doo -doo -doo. Once per turn, when your battle when your battle card attacks a leader, if the attacking card has 15 or more power, draw a card. That Vados has 500. So unless you play a Kaba, turn one. Okay, your opponent goes, does get rid of the Kaba. On turn two, once you awaken, or like once you play the Vados, you can swing with the Kaba, take a life, which will be redundant. Redundant? Redundant? What are those words? Um, because you are lowering your life for no reason. Uh, when you want to keep your life healthy because you're woken early and you're trying just to defend your opponent has to get through that If they're not playing victory strike, that's pretty good. If they are then uh, You want to want to see as much cards as possible But the Kaba will draw your card you awaken draw two more cards and swing with your leader draw another card So Kaba giving you a card plus drawing that's two awaken four uh, Chopper swinging five cards you can do. Oh my god, that's incredible but Again, that's only if you bring a turn one play to be able to swing and do this whole crazy thing. So, the leader that I did want to use was Vados, because this girl from the very set one had such an interesting ability. 
the hardest part about her is that she desperately needed to awaken as fast as possible. So most of the time you would see it a red blue version because you would objection and try to get to resolve training. It's a card that most new players don't know, but it was really good back then, like set one, two, maybe even three. Um, and then it fell off. But um, her permanent is this card can attack battle cards and active ball. That's not bad. It's pretty good. You know, there's some battle cards that already do that, but this is a leader that can do that. So it's not giving your opponent life. It's literally just controlling the board. Awesome. Actually, now that I'm talking about it, I'm like, ooh, victory strike deck? Not bad. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Next, you awaken, you'll draw two cards. Cool, cool. Permanent, you can attack active battle cards. Yay, it keeps the same thing. But auto... When it attacks, you draw a card. If this card is attacking a battle card, it gains 5,000 power more for the duration of turn. So it swings at battle cards for 20k, which is pretty solid. It's not bad. Um, so that was a concept, and this deck that I made, that I'm going to show you, um, tries to control the board with the leader and then aggros everything else because I want to be swinging at 20k's at things. So that's the goal. Let's check out what I got going on. So, bam, wham. Thank you, ma'am. This is actually, oh my god, look look at this, 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 is, this is horrible, I, I didn't, sorry guys, I should have tested this out better. Uh, two seconds, two seconds, let me try to fix this, Ooh -wee. bam, now, now we're fixing, now you can see all these cards, I was hiding the ultimate, I was trying to hide that, but, forgive me, editing while recording, not the smartest idea, but you know me, I'm, I'm kind of freelance this and we know Marcel's not going to edit it anyway, so. So this is the deck in mind. Um, it's a lot like Jonathan and Andrew Duvall's uh, Red Frieza leader. I love the engine that they have with the red spaceship and the Frieza package. The reason I put the Frieza package in here, one, other than this card that requires a Red Frieza army leader, all the other cards work just working. There's Swap, which theoretically might... If there was a rating of worst mechanics in this game, or like that hurt the game, uh, swap is definitely like one, two, or three. Probably number one, but uh, I had to put thought into that. Uh, that was because of Bardock. This Frieza, not that bad. Fair balance. Um, trying to explain how this deck works. Vados, we already talked about it. Attacks active. So, what we're doing now is this package. So let's explain. This one drop. It's a red Frieza that has swap for free. Three. It costs one, has swap for free. But its ability is when you play it, uh, you choose a red leader or red battle card and give it 5,000. What? Okay, that's not bad. So, Vados, when it's awakened, is already swinging for 20. But if you play this, you give it 25. You give five more. So, it's swinging for 25 at something. Either your opponent's super defending it or negating the attack, or they're going to lose it. That's kind of like the goal in mind. Um, then, it has swap for free and brings out a two drop. The only two drop it can bring out is this one, but we'll talk about it in a sec. You got your awakening package. This is the only reason we made this deck in the first place. This card right here, it helps you awaken. Strong card, but um, the, it's it's the engine. Your turn two play, you got this Vados, or you got this Red Freezer ship. You got seven cards out of 50 to try to mulligan for or draw. So you can awaken early or get the engine going. So your turn two is probably your best turn. This one, I wanted to show this Deborah at least some kind of light, because you guys know if you guys know me from old days, I like Bobbity. Bobbity is okay, not great, the board never shined. So I finally saw this card and it theoretically goes really well with what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to control the board. I'm trying to kill, make sure they have nothing. If they defend it for whatever reason, this Deborah is the next line of defense to shut him down. What his ability is, is he's a two drop, double red. This is literally every turn you want to charge red. Double red, 15k, all right, solid number for a uh, two drop. Uh, Active main once per turn, you choose a battle card. That battle card cannot attack nor be comboed until the end of your opponent's next turn. So it literally shuts something down. It's less like you can't deal with the problem, you don't have the removal, so you want to lock it. Shut down, I don't have to deal with it right now. I can still swing, they can't even combo with it. So it's it's a nice addition. It came in this new set of anniversary box, I believe, or no, it's a world tournament uh, promo. Forgive me, forgive me, I, I messed up. People do that. Um, but still, a very interesting card that I hope sees play in one of these kind of control matchups or control decks. Um, next is the Doria. He is a blocker that when he gets KO'd, 
he can bring out a red Frieza, two or less. Now that's huge because it can bring out this red Frieza or this red Frieza. But why is this such a big deal? Is because it's a blocker. So let's say you block anything. Ah, let it die. Um, then when it goes, when it gets destroyed, you bring out this one drop. So this is a great play that I've learned through Jonathan and Andrew Duvall. That you bring this out on your opponent's turn, you choose your leader, and you the leader gains 5k for duration of the turn. That's like Sensu Bean on your opponent's turn. Red has a Sensu Bean. I can't believe it. Um, so very really interesting. That's a great concept, and that's the main reason why I put this engine. It it, uh, it has pressure, it has good control, it has a beam without trying to do blue. Amazing. This one, this two drop is has swap three, so it can bring out a three drop for one red. All you have to do is pay one red, put it back into your hand, and bring out a three drop. Uh, it's a 15k, but it's permanent is on your opponent's turn, it's a 10k. So, you know, a 10k is pretty much going to die. You're not going to defend it. So when you swing 15, you want to bounce it back and get rid of it. Even if you do not have the three drop, you want to be conservative. You don't want something to die for free. You want to just pay that one red to bounce in your hand. It's almost like a theory, theoretically of drawing one card. It's like, oh, got it back. Um, we're going to get to that three drop in one second. The last one we do play of a two drop is... Uh, Zabor, Zabor, I believe his name is. And this card's really good. It's a two drop 15k that when it gets destroyed, when it gets KO'd, so when it dies by battle or effects, as long as it doesn't get warped, you get to draw a card, then pick one of your opponent's battle card and minus 15k. It's a thing that stays on the board. Per theoretically, 100% of the, the game. But the moment they do some ability that forces them to destroy it, you're going to replace it completely. So it's going to apply pressure. Every time it's going to take like a 5k. Swing 5k. Swing 5k. Until they get rid of it. Once they finally get rid of it, you're going to draw a card, minus 15k something solid. It does its job. It is an incredible like card. It just doesn't see too much play. This deck is supposed to show cards that just don't see play. And let's see them. Uh, next is a 3-drop that helps you also control the board. Your Vados is controlling the board. Now this one. When it comes into play... You get to destroy something 20k or less pretty good and we literally bring it out for one red once this comes out so your turn one you want to play this guy out cool uh your turn two you want to awaken by turn three you kind of want to swap in to this guy swing 15 you want to pay one only one that's all you've done now 300 you paid one so you have two left you bring out this 15k but you get to destroy something you're controlling the board and you still have two energy to work with so hear me out uh, it has barrier, so it kind of just sits on the field. If you don't want it to die, you can just let it sit until your opponent has something to deal with it, which there's not too much. There's like a new card that got added, but barrier is active, stays pretty on the board. Um, it has swap five. It doesn't even go to four. It skips four. It goes straight to five. For two red, you bounce it back to your hand and play a five drop. What's the five drop? This monster 25k double strike critical. That's all it does. This whole big text is irrelevant because it only works if your leader is a red freezer army so you can't do it and that's fine we're literally just using it as a body as a closing out finisher because it's 25k critical you kind of if you have it in hand solid we're going to bring it out swing your opponent has to deal with it good card um we wish it could have the effect but it doesn't and that's okay not a big deal now this gogeta solid strong card double strike 20k that's a five drop we're never going to pay five for it it has a fantastic ability called Arrival, that if in your combo area there's a green and red card, you can pay one red to bring him out to the board. When he comes out to the board, he destroys, I believe, five or less. I want to say five or less. If he can destroy anything, uh, it seems broken, and I haven't made enough decks with it. So let me just check real quick. We don't want to ruin this deck. Bam, bam. Doo, doo. I should know this. Mind you, this is all theory crafted. But real quick to find out, four or less, four or less. So, kills Janimbo. Not bad, right? They swing with 20k crit, they're like, ha ha. They're like, no, I'm not gonna get mill 200 to destroy right away. But um, that's what he does. Oh, but you have a red deck. How do you have green cards? Now, I do have seven green cards. Theoretically, they're really good for the deck. The first green card that we do run is the Sacrifice f Attack Freezer. Surprise attack for a sacrifice attack. We're using it as a sacrifice, but it's a surprise attack. Um, basically, if one of your opponent's battle cards is destroyed, you can bring this card out for free. That's incredible. It's amazing. Why? Because our leader attacks active cards. So they play a McNugget, turn one. We can even just swing at it, kill it, bring out this 15k crit 
Frieza and start swinging. By turn one, that's huge. How are they dealing with it? So, other than Broly BR, because that doesn't count. Um, this card is actually really strong for this leader. And it's green, so it helps us in this package. So, the extra copy, the thing is, you can only use that ability once in the sense of if there's one on the board, you can't do it anymore. It's called balance. Thank God, Bandai, you guys did something. Um, but it's 15k, comes out. The extra ones, you can just combo them to try to bring this out. Solid, solid. And the other green card we're going to skip over real quick, whoop, is this green super combo. That if your leader is universe, I believe, two or a god, uh, which Fado is a god, you can, at four or less life, dis discard a card, draw two cards, and then this card gains 10k. Solid card. Uh, that's Paragus only works for green leaders. This is a super combo for gods. And since it is green and we are a red deck, we figured we'll combo with green, combo with a red, and then pay one red and bring out this Gogeta pop something. Not bad. The concept is there. Uh, then for Overrun, this is a solid Overrun card. Your Overrun 3 you have to pay nothing. So, you know, with red leaders, the thing is, like, you kind of almost tap out every turn. Uh, there's not that many 10Ks to defend yourself with. There's... Uh, two and oh, two, six, nine, nine, and then one negates and stuff. So thirteen cards. So you kind of want to keep one open just in case, but you don't need to. Most of the time, you're gonna tap out. So overrun for free is solid. Uh, auto when you play this card through overrun. If your leader is blue or red, give it five k and draw a card. So our leader already swings for twenty. We're giving it five k, so it swings for twenty five. If we pay one red, it swings for thirty. Add an active card. We're killing active cards. That's the goal. Plus, it replaces ourself. It replaces itself and swings for fifteen in our opponent's leader. This card is solid. Um, so that's the overall card. I did want to put one scientist food just to give it a little extra like um, draw power, but like three. Overall cards plus a scientist food, like how much cards do I really have in the graveyard? It gets a little complicated, so I made it simple. Three of this. This ultimate card, monster, freezer, eight drop, that if your life is two or less, it reduces by three, so it's a five drop, that when it comes into play, you look at your opponent's hand, you discard anything you want. It could be a negate, it could be a super combo, you discard whatever you want. Then, on your opponent's side of the field, everything 4,000 or less, goes to drop barrier, gets destroyed. Uh, ignores barrier, does all that stuff, solid card. Um, it's a really good thing because, doo -doo -doo, I believe it ignores barrier. You know, I said that, and as I said it, I'm just like, mm -hmm, the tongue tight. So we're gonna read it real quick, really quick, really quick. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's forgive me, guys. Bam, ignoring barrier. 4,000 less, ignoring barrier. See, your boy, your boy's kinda smart, man, every card, what's up? Um, so why is this good? Well, most of the time when you're playing games, you kind of want to stay at three life. Most of the time, you always want to stay at three life because you're scared of the Chompa to die and stuff. But doesn't mean your opponent's going to stop attacking. They're going to make you waste cards. They're going to try to get you at two as soon as possible. And then the next turn, they're like, oh, I'm a shotgun. I'm going to have the Chompa and I have everything. And I can win next turn. So you kind of calculate on the board and you're like, all right, that's his last attack. He swings for 15 at your leader. He knows you're going to waste 5k, but what he doesn't know is you're getting to turn 5 and you have this monster in your hand. So if they swing in like 15, no combos. You gotta waste 5 and be like, I'm gonna take it. And then you go down to 2, 5 energy. You play this monster. This guy has Kawako. Ko 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 hmm. Quad Strike. Quad Strike? I'm gonna say Quad Strike because right now, for the life of me, I do not. <laughs> I, I don't know what that word is. Quad. Quadruple? Quadruple? I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. Guys, understand that my reading is not the best, but I do try with a smile. Uh, so Quad Strike, taking four life, so it's a monster. It looks at the hand, wipes the board, we don't have to deal with barrier, defenders, nothing. And hopefully get rid of the spark in the gate, whatever the case. And then swing for 4,000. We're going to combo our hand, because most of our other cards are 5k. And we're going for game, just like that. So, monster card, this is our turn 5 finisher. Now, and of course you got your negates, after image ne technique is one of the best red negates there is. It's not a full negate. What the card is, it's activated in the counter step. So when they attack, you can choose to do it. And what it does is gives any red card 4,000 boost, and then you minus 10 one of their cards. Um, solid, really good, in the sense of like, if they're swinging with a battle card, it's almost like a plus 50. Unless they only have 10 to swing with, and you minus 10 there completely and kill it. 
But um, Victory Strike, as popular as it is, red decks have not seen enough play. And after image technique is one of the best cards against Victory Strike because Victory Strike cannot be negated, the attack, but you can activate after image technique to basically pump yourself to 50. 50 more in leader, so you're 65. Uh, Victory Strike swings for 45, I believe. And then they have to already combo 20k to even just match you, right? Because 50, you'd be 65, they, yeah. It's such a good counter against Victory Strike. So solid, that's kind of the goal. And then Spaceship. Spaceship is another engine in itself because you know all these leaders have ridiculous abilities to uh, draw two cards, do this, do that. Insane. All the old school leaders can't do that. They can't keep up with this leader. Now can awaken turn two. And then by turn three, we kind of get the ball rolling. It's either the spaceship or Vado. So you kind of have to decide which one you want to play first. But the spaceship's so good because at the end of each of your turns, as long as spaceship is out, you play a Red Frieza army card, two or less from your hand and I'm pretty sure it's two or less if it's if it's just two that's okay too because we have a bunch of two drops but t -t -t -t, spaceship bam spaceship at the end of your turn choose one red freeze army card with energy cost of two from your hand and play it if you played with the skill draw one card so it is two you can't play the one drop that's okay we only have one here but everything else you got four eight twelve you got 12 choices, and this card bounces back to your hand if you need it, so you can have, you know, be like, oh, I don't have cards in hand, be like, oh, I'll play the one red. You don't have to play a three drop if you don't have it, so at least you have it in your hand, and then you play with Spaceship because you want to draw a card. It's literally playing something for free. Uh, the concept is Spaceship, bring out the Doria, um, draw a card, the Doria? The Doria, right? Oh, I'm saying it right. Um, bring them out, draw a card, so it replaces itself, and then you can use it as a block and be uh, beam yourself. Then on your turn, you can swap, swing for 15, swap, swing for 15 again, popping something. And if you even have the 5 drop, swap, bring in this. So it's aggressive, it's control, amazing. This little card up here on the top of side deck, um, it's just a suggestion. It's another card that I looked at that looks pretty good. Um, it's a barrier blocker, so it adds another blocker to the, the deck, which would have been really cool. Um, with auto, when it comes into play, all your other red cards and red leaders gain 5k and double strike insane so we want to pump up bottles so it can attack more things or have double strike and attack our opponent um we do put a board out here because of spaceship and setting up that when you play fearless pan it can be really strong so i wanted to show off this card as much as possible because this is a control deck with theoretically aggressive in there um but if you want it if you like this card better than this then you just take out these two put this in there's little changes. I'm just trying to give you a rough draft of how this card can be used. And that's kind of the concept of all the new cards that I'm going to show. Because, again, I can't I can't save everybody. I can't, I can't make every card good or strong because I have been trying. But um, I'm just showing you the sculpture or the skeleton of a deck that you can make. So I hope you guys like it. This is my take for Vados. This is my very first Vados profile. So super excited this is success one i wanted to make it and it just never was good enough for me for other players they tried it they liked it uh i finally have one that's like all right i will play this definitely on a local all these card decks are probably going to be local level the only one that theoretically probably has a chance uh this card is definitely going to see competitive play this 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 is insane pan was already like it's like tier one tier two it doesn't seem much uh, to be honest, I don't know why. Anytime someone plays Pan, I know that matchup is already going to be a headache. Pan's always that leader that just comes out of nowhere. This card's really good. Why? Because Chain Attack uh, Trunk can evolve over it too. So, really good. Um, Dr. Mew is cute. Uh, Beerus is cute. Zamasu actually might see play because there's a lot of good cards for Zamasu. Da -da -da. This would see play. I'm hoping we'll see a ton of play. This card is incredible. This is our answer to Path of Greatness. Um, George Machado's Janimba Blue Yellow deck. A lot of people are like, Blue Yellow sucks, Mono Blue is better. Maybe true. I'm not even lying about that. But this card, if you have a multicolored card, so Blue Yellow, um, you can combo this card or play it. But we're never going to play two green and Janimba. So we're going to combo it away to destroy one of your opponent's battle cards with Barrier, three or less. So we're getting rid of. Path of Greatness. Jinnaba has a full-on answer. The blue-yellow type. So, ideas, guys. Ideas. I'm not making a deck profile of that because last Jinnaba list or profile I made, some people were disappointed. I'm not going to have disappointment here again. And let's see. 
yellow. I see this one. I see cooler. I see cooler. I, I'm even trying to get Bandai to reach out and be like, yo, fix this like ASAP because I know this was supposed to be for front and backside. You have the picture in the front and his backside. This car should work both ways. If it only stays for the unawakened side, this car won't see light of day. I mean, we, we need to try it because cooler is just like right there to be really good. Um, also a good card, not needed this freezer by the way, not, not a fan, like yellow freezer is the boy, but it's just not needed. Now I know what happened to the picture, there we go, awesome, now we're back to set motion, this is how it's supposed to look. Um, this cooler man, if someone does this to me, I think I'll give them a win right away, because I'm just going to be impressed. I don't know who's going to play three yellow to negate a counter. But, you know what, that's me. Man, I'm, I'm a bad player, it's fine. Ginyu, uh, hopefully we can see an, another Ginyu deck. A lot of the Ginyu decks we've seen is Purunga. Um, though that kind of leader, we haven't seen like a Ginyu leader playing Ginyu Force again, so maybe this might come back. And Black is just nothing but monster. Every, every card is really good. But this is my take. Thank you for joining me. I hope you like it. And give it a shot and leave comments uh, and try it out. Till next time, guys, see you.